Hello everyone and welcome to this tutorial. So today what I'm going to be showing you is how you can make the loading of a JavaScript file conditional. So for this example, I'm making a request to an API, which is going to send me back some data about the current location of the user. When that is back, the handler function is going to fire, passing in an object that has the user's country code on it. And then when this runs, I'm checking to see if that country code reads US. If so, this log to the console is going to run. If not, then there will be no output. So this is a fairly typical example in practice where you have users coming from various locations. And for some users, you can run some scripts. And for other users, maybe because of privacy laws, for example, you don't want them to run for those users. So I've created three scripts that I want to run. Script.js should run for all users script2.js should only run for US users and script3 should also run for US users only. So there are two approaches that I'm going to show you. The first one involves creating a new script element in JavaScript and then appending it to the DOM. With the second one, you place script tags in HTML already, but you set conditional scripts not to run initially and then you use JavaScript to run them if your condition is satisfied. So let's start with the first solution of creating a new element in JavaScript. So to create a new element, you call create element and you pass in as a string the type of element you would like to create. So in this case, we want to create a new script. So we need to set a source for the script. So I'm going to set this to load script two and we'll return to how you can load more than one script conditionally in a moment. I also want to set the type attribute to text JavaScript. This lets the browser know immediately that the content within this script is JavaScript. The final attribute that you might consider setting on the script is its async attribute. So by default, the loading behavior of a script that you append to the DOM is async. This means that if you append scripts in order, they may not finish in that order. So if you want to make sure that they finish in the same order, you've got more than one, then you want to set async to false. And the final step is to append the script to the DOM. So I'm going to append this to the head of the document using append child because it's an element and pass in script there. Now, as soon as this script hits the DOM, it's going to run if the user is from the US. So I'm not currently in the US. So when I try to refresh this, you see that nothing is being logged in the console. None of the scripts are running. But if I start my VPN here so that it appears as if I'm in Atlanta, and I refresh, you see that the JavaScript file that we were linking to, it ran in the browser. Now, if you want to run multiple scripts conditionally, then you only need to make a few small adjustments here. So the first one is to store the paths to all the scripts in an array. So I'm going to store this script to path here, and also, the script three path. And then what I'm going to do is to embed this entire process here inside an iterative method. So for that, I'm going to call for each on scripts. So this is going to run the function I pass into it as many times as there are items in the array. And each time the function runs, I have each script in the array available to me. And what I can do is place all of this code inside of the function inside for each. So I'll just tidy this up a bit. So each time this runs, it's going to set the SRC of the script this time instead of this hard coded value of script two, you set it to item. So this is going to run twice and append two script elements to the DOM. 
that run one after the other because I set async to false. So let's take a look at this now in the browser. So I'm still in the US and when I refresh the page now, both of the scripts run. If I turn my VPN off, so I'm no longer in the US and refresh, you see that nothing is now logged to the console. Now for script.js, I want this one to load for all users, so I don't want it to load conditionally. So I could create another script element with JavaScript and append it to the DOM, but I actually don't need JavaScript here. So I'll just go ahead and insert a script element in the head of my document that is going to link to that script. And it's good practice to also set the type attribute to text JavaScript so the browser knows that it's reading JavaScript. So I'm still not in the US, but now script.js is loading. Open my VPN again to set my location to the US. And you see that script.js as well as the conditional scripts are loading as well. So this is the first solution. The second solution that I'm about to show you, you might prefer if you like having your script tags in the HTML initially. So what I'm going to do is to create two new script tags here that link to script two and also to script three. Now, as you would expect, if I were to load the page, all three of these scripts would run. What I want to do is to prevent script two and script three from loading initially. And I can do that by changing their types from text forward slash JavaScript to text forward slash plain. Now, when you do this and in your browser, the DOM parser comes across these two scripts, it's going to ignore them. It's not going to download them and it's not going to run them. Now, in a moment, I'm going to be selecting these two scripts in JavaScript and running them conditionally. So to make them easier to select, I'm going to set a class attribute of conditional in both cases. Now down in JavaScript, when the user is from the US and I want my conditional scripts to run, I'm going to start by selecting those script elements that I gave the class value of conditional to, and I'll save a reference to those as C scripts. Now, what I want to do for each of the conditional scripts that I selected is recreate them in JavaScript and then append the recreation to the DOM. Now, in some browsers, you can just change the type from plain text to text JavaScript, and that is going to run the script, but this doesn't work, for example, in Firefox. So if you want a cross-browser solution, then you need to create a new element. So I'm going to want to create as many elements as there are items in C scripts. So I'm going to call the for each method on C scripts, passing in a function here. This is going to run as many times as there are items and I have available to me each time the function runs each item. So each time this function runs, I'm going to want to create a new script element. So the same as last time, I'll save a reference to it under script. Now to recreate the script that I'm currently iterating through, I need all the attributes on that script. So to get those, at least the names of them, I can call the get attributes name on that script. And that's going to return the name of all the attributes in an array. And now I want to set all of those attributes on the new script that I am creating. So I'm going to be iterating through the attributes for the current item. So I can do that again, calling for each. And what I have available to me here is each attribute. And each time this function runs, I want to, on the script that I created, set an attribute 
of the name attribute and then to get the value of that attribute on the original script in the DOM I can call the get attribute method on item and I pass into there the name of the attribute that I want to get the value of so this is the one that I'm iterating through with for each so this for each call when it runs it's going to set all of the attributes on the original script to the new script that I've created. Now something that I definitely want to change is the script.type attribute so I don't want that to be text plain I want that to be text forward slash JavaScript so inside the for each it will have adopted the text plain attribute for type this is going to overwrite that now in case you have multiple scripts and you want them to run in the order that you insert them into the DOM then you want to set the async attribute here to false because by default it's true and then finally it makes sense to remove the existing script from the DOM because it's no longer needed and then to insert the new script that is a replica of the existing script with the type set to text JavaScript. So append that now into the DOM. So with my VPN, I am still set to a location in the US. Now, if I refresh the page here, you can see that all of the scripts are running, both the first one and the ones for US users only. Now, if I turn off my VPN only script.js is running. Now you might be wondering if this is an inefficient solution because the scripts are already in the DOM and we're recreating the script. Didn't the script download initially and we're basically re-downloading it? Well this actually isn't the case. When text plane is set the browser completely ignores the script so we can see if those scripts are loading at all by going to the network, seeing what resources are in play here. So if I refresh, you see that there's no downloading of script two and script three. It's only downloading script.js. But if I go back to the US setting, then you'll see that script two and script three have been downloaded and of course they run as well. Now one case where this approach can be really useful is if you have a CDN that has more attributes than just an SRC and a type attribute. So for example this would be loading the Axios HTTP client. It has a referral policy attribute and a cross origin and also an integrity attribute. So using the method that we were below, all of these attributes will be extracted from the original script in the DOM and will be set on the new script that you append in your document. If you wanted to do this with the first solution where you create the script entirely in JavaScript, you would have to set each one of these attributes using the set attribute method. So arguably this method is especially useful when you have scripts with lots of attributes on them that you don't want to set yourself in JavaScript like you commonly do when you load a script using a CDN link. So that is it for this tutorial. I hope you found it useful. If you did, please consider hitting the like button down below this video. It helps us with the algorithm and others to find this video. And if you'd like to see more content like this from us in the future, don't forget you can subscribe to the channel.